And we welcome you to Mountaineer Field at Milan Pushkar Stadium at CSPN College Football, presented by Vizio, where the folks are sitting in a spitting rain today. Temperatures in the 40s as we get set for Texas. One win away from bowl eligibility, and the West Virginia Mountaineers looking for a third win in a row. Six different teams are still alive in the chase for those two spots in the Big 12 championship game. Over a thousand different ways this could play out in the next couple of weeks as we welcome you to Morgantown. Beth Mowens, former Morgantown legend, Anthony Beck, uh, back in your uh, hometown here, Anthony, where you played collegiately. And we've got Will Greer at quarterback for this West Virginia team. He's top five in the country, Anthony, in passing yards, passing touchdowns, could have another big day in store. You're right. After coming off 10 wins last year, a lot of question marks at the skill position. The expectation levels were high for Will Greer. And I call it backyard ball, folks. This young man can really create in the pocket. He will not give up on the passing game. And when the time has really crunched down, he'll move around, he'll make plays. Look at this line. He's all over the place, and he's still able to find a big play receiver down the field for the touchdown. I love this kid's competitiveness, the will, the drive. If it's not there, he'll run, he'll dive, he'll do whatever it takes. He won't even slide at the quarterback position, but Mountaineer fans have grown to love this young man playing football. And Mother Nature just turned the water pipes on. It is now a downpour in Morgantown. 46 degrees, expecting the rain to last throughout the afternoon on and off. Texas winning the toss. They have deferred, so West Virginia set to receive. Texas in all white with the burnt orange. Blue jerseys for the Mountaineers. And that will skid out the back of the end zone. And West Virginia and this Will Greer offense will get things started. The transfer from Florida has really settled in nicely in his first season here, averaging 344 yards per game. A master of the deep ball. You'll see plenty of them today. Every progression, he'll go one to four. And if he's got enough time, he'll go back to one. Pocket savvy is amazing. He will extend plays till the max. Number seven in the country in offense for this West Virginia cr uh, crew with Justin Crawford and Elijah Wellman in the backfield with Greer. And this is Justin Crawford, the senior from Columbus, Georgia, as we head down to the field in Rocky Boyman. Yeah, the weather down here is very, very odd. It just two seconds ago, it was a torrential downpour, and then it'll stop. 30 minutes ago, torrential downpour, and then it stopped. So, but right now, you have to figure the advantage in the weather goes to West Virginia. They've played three other games in the rain. Texas has played zero games in the elements this year. Thank you, Rocky. They tried to hit Crawford on the quick hitter, and it's third and eight. The key today for, for all the wide receivers and backs, you must catch the ball with your hands, look it all the way in. A lot of balls are going to get thrown today, especially this West Virginia offense. You've got to make sure you secure the football in the wet weather. Have not been terrific so far on third downs this season. Sills and Jennings go to the top of your screen. Greer looking that way against the four-man pressure and the catch underneath to Gary Jennings, well shy of the marker. Antoine Davis, the nickelback, had the coverage in the punting unit will come on. I think you'll see a lot more speed, skill guys for the defense, dropping eight, trying to get Greer to make those quick decisions and tight window throws. Nice job by Texas drumming up a little pressure there to get the ball back. Billy Kinney will punt it away. He coming, and he just did get it out of there. And the fair catch at the 25-yard line by Reggie Hemphill Maps. And big question for Longhorn fans, who was going to get the start today at quarterback? And it will be Shane Bouchel making his 18th career start the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Uh, tremendous accuracy as a passer, especially when pressure's in his face. He's got a quick release, which he'll need against this defense. Durability is the big question, Beth. Can he stay healthy? He doesn't run the ball much. You'll, you'll see two quarterbacks in this football game for sure for this Texas offense. Another good news for the Longhorns is the return of Connor Williams, number 55 at left tackle. And it's Daniel Young who will get the call here at tailback. 
Play action from Bouchelle, and he overthrows Young coming out of the backfield. Let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Jared, the gallery of jewelry. You gotta start with Connor Williams. He's missed seven games. He's the most important figure on this offensive line. Colin Johnson, 6'6", and then long and white at the linebacker spur positions. These guys are tremendous tacklers in space. On second and 10. Pass is caught out on the flat. Colin Johnson, their leading receiver with his 46th catch of the year. Mike Daniels had the coverage in a gain of 10. Yeah, check out Connor Williams, obviously. That, that's the difference right there. That's a nasty player. He's high on many draft boards, and he's setting the tone on the edge, Beth, early on. Junior out of Capel, Texas, the All-American, bouncing back from the knee injury earlier this year. Amani Foreman with another eight-yard gain there for Texas. Rocky? Yeah, Texas fans happy to see Connor Williams back there, but I think Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, he wants to test Connor Williams early to see how football-ready he is after a two-month layoff. And it won't be one-on-ones, Rocky. It'll be blitzes. It'll be pressures. He'll bring multiple players on his side to test his lateral movement with his knee. And of course, when you're talking West Virginia and Tony Gibson, Anthony, it's this 3-5 no three, three, alignment. The pass was caught at or behind the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Our referee today is Brandon Cruz. The replay official, Gary Brown, upstairs on second and two. The ruling on the field that the pass was caught at or behind the line of scrimmage is under review. All right, so a review heading upstairs. We'll take the break while they review it. Come right back. After reviewing the play, the pass was caught by the receiver beyond the line of scrimmage. Therefore, this is a penalty for offensive pass yeah, interference by number 88. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It'll be first and 25. Yeah, the line of scrimmage is right where, uh, in front of where Foreman catches the football. Those receivers, especially number 88, cannot engage with the defense. It's close. Maybe nitpicking yeah. when you're looking at it, but it's a penalty, and it'll push them back in a tough, longer first down situation. More their third string tight end, by the way. Kate Brewer did not make the trip, and Andrew Beck's been out with an injury. Danny Young with a nice cutback. The freshman out of Houston. He and Tennille Carter have picked up the load with Kyle Porter and Chris Warren, uh, Warren now playing a secondary role. When you talk to offensive coordinator Tim Beck, they need to establish the run. With Connor Williams at left tackle back, they need to find ways to mash an undersized defensive front, especially in the box for West Virginia. Against that three-man pressure, Bouchelle underneath to Young, he slammed to the ground at the 35, and a big hit by the Spur, Kazir White. Kazir White is an animal on the field. He will be sorely missed. One of the more explosive defenders to put a West Virginia Mountaineer uniform on. Perfect form tackle right on the spot. Big hit. Third and nine. Trying to get the call right on defense. Let's see if West Virginia brings a little heat here with one back in the backfield for Texas. They stay back. Bouchelle with time, and the receiver trying to make a play on the edge is Humphrey lunging for the first down mark, but they're going to spot him a couple yards shy, and it's fourth down. That was White again who got a hold of him. And this is a close area here. Texas is going to look at it. Coach Herman obviously now is going to decide to punt. And Beth, intro, probably the best punter in the country. <laughs> I don't talk too much about him, but this kid's the real deal. Oh, the junior from Australia, number one in the nation, averaging nearly 50 yards per boot. He's a semifinalist for the Ray Guy Award, best punter in the country. If he gets it, he'd be the first Longhorn to do so. Marcus Sims with the fair catch at his own eight-yard line. Scoreless early in West Virginia, 47 on that punt.
ESPN College Football is presented by Vizio, maker of award-winning 4K displays, and in part by the 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. Let me welcome you back to West Virginia. It, yes, folks, that, those are horns on the dog. Look them. <laughs> Tonight on ABC is Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. Josh Rosen and UCLA taking on Sam Darnold and USC. They've been playing this one since 1929 for the Victory Bell out in Los Angeles, and you can catch it tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app. A couple of young quarterbacks out there that may both be going pro, Anthony, which could mean that guy right there may be the top returning quarterback in the land next I year. Th I think he should definitely come back. He's been electric, but he does have to utilize and learn the position more, but he's been spectacular, like we said, especially with the deep ball. They're back there at their own five, by the way, because of a holding penalty on the punt as Crawford breaks and tackles and scampers out across the 15 and a 13-yard run. I think he was underutilized as a back early on with this offense. They utilize him more now out of the pistol, which is directly behind the quarterback in running situations, and he's had some nice open field runs the last couple weeks. Crawford again. Out across the 20, Rocky. It's a great matchup down here in the trenches, and that is Puna Ford, the nose tackle for Texas against Matt Jones, the young center. Puna Ford has been explosive this season. He really controls that line of scrimmage and commands a lot of double teams. He'll be head up all day long on the redshirt sophomore, Matt Jones. Look for many double teams and some help for that young man. Catch is made by Karan White, but he had a knee down when he caught it, and that'll be three more, and it's third down coming up. How about this kid, Karan White? You want to talk about home run hitters. Check him out down the field today. It seems like every single game, he can catch a deep ball at any point in this football game. Great connection between him and Will Greer. Six touchdowns of over 25 yards this season, including a couple over 75. White joins Gary Jennings to the bottom of your screen. Now Jennings in motion. They pick up the blitz. Greer stepping up deep downfield, and it's dropped by White. Started to turn and run with it and didn't quite have it yet. It's a wet day, Beth. We talked about it. You got to make sure you foul this ball. Will Greer does an excellent job buying time in the pocket. But look how easy this is. You see the head come off of it, let the ball come into his body. You've got to track that football. Would have been a big play. Now they're going, shown uh, in a fourth down set, takes the offense off the field. And Bill Maps is back deep. Kenny and a wobbler shanked it. Texas will have it here in West Virginia territory. Just how good remains to be seen. At the 46. Let's go to Adnan Vert in the studio. All right, Beth, thank you very much. It's the LL Bean Studio update. Just a week ago, Miami had that enormous victory against Notre Dame. This time they're facing Virginia over on ABC. And Kurt Benker to Alamade Zacchaeus. Virginia's on the board. 7 0. It's early. Beth, back to you. Adnan, we were wondering a little bit if there might be a little letdown by the Canes after that big win. Of course, Miami's into the ACC championship game, but they've got a college football playoff berth on their mind as well. Here comes Texas now after the 22-yard punt, incomplete on first down to Humphrey. White broke it up. I'll tell you, this offensive line, Beth, has been all over the place. Multiple starting lineups. Obviously, Connor Williams being out number 55. Shackleford, their true center, 56. He's been out. Uh, CUNY's been in. And then, of course, they have the red shirt freshman at right tackle filling in for Elijah Rodriguez, the junior, out for the entire season. On second down, that O-line looking to clear some space and getting to the outside is Young. Hauled down at the 24, but there's a flag at the end of the play. And I think it was Chris Warren who was trying to lead the way, got a tug. Gain of 22 might be wiped out here. Holding, offense number 64. 10-yard penalty from the spot on the foul. It's second down. 
how about this being the sixth different lineup for this offensive unit? 47 games missed by these guys. That was week one against Maryland, and then the injuries started. It's not an excuse, Beth. This is a real situation. This has been tough for Tom Herman, Tim Beck, to utilize the offensive playbook that they want to do. And in, with the mixture of quarterbacks, it's been tough for this offense. And second and 19, Young getting a lot of touches early on. Hit at the 49 by Al Rashid Benton. And they get four yards back. So a penalty hurt them on their first drive. Is it going to do some damage here on the second as well? It's third down. And this third and long situation, you would expect West Virginia to drop eight here, play the space, keep players in front of them, and force the quarterback to make a tight window throw. Tom Herman in his first season after success at Houston and a part of that national championship staff at Ohio State. Bouchel with the time, throws a dart, and it's dropped by John Burt. That would have been enough for a first down. I'll tell you, I'm impressed by Bouchel's arm strength. That was a rocket he just threw to Burt. Here's an in-cut, pulls some defenders down with the underneath, right in the gut. Would have been a first down. You've got to catch that football. Now we've seen two drops, Beth, both sides, one for West Virginia, one for Texas. These players have to follow that ball in, maybe take the gloves off, Beth, in this football game. Due to the weather, both sides may need to make some adjustments. Took only a, a half swing at that one, and again, Sims with the fair catch, a 33-yard punt. Scoreless, Greer and company coming back. How about a little Texas recap for you? It opened up uh, not good with the stunning loss to the Maryland Terrapins. And then they hit an even tougher stretch in the schedule. 0-4 against ranked teams this year, including USC in a tight one, and uh, the rough overtime loss to Oklahoma State. And now with two games to go, including today, they need one to get to a bowl. Greer to Jennings coming out of the backfield. Rocky? Yeah, this defense that Todd Orlando brought to Texas has been phenomenal this year. And you just saw it on that play. It's designed to get speedy playmakers in space and allow them to make tackles. A three down front, but you see especially those linebackers and safeties, boy, they have some speed and they fly around and hit. Boy, and the numbers have been much better after that opening loss. Been pretty good in league play. Jason Hall with the tackle they are they are shallow in the secondary due to some injuries in a suspension they're going to be tested today much better tacklers better effort malik jefferson has really come onto the scene after two tough years a big star five-star recruit deshaun elliott at the safety position number four is an explosive downhill safety that can really make things happen for this defense Rear to Karan White and corralled immediately by Devontae Davis. Did they throw a flag late? They did. You hate to see those penalties, but that's something they lacked se severely last year when we covered them. A defense that missed tackles, was in the wrong spots. Again, you don't want to see those kind of mistakes because in a game like this where it's close, back and forth, Beth, you don't want to extend yeah. the chains to give him a cheap one. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 18, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Third penalty already of the quarter against Texas. Yeah, Devontae Davis is going to give a little extra. Uh, to me, Beth, I don't know. I I'm living with that. Good clean tackle, throws him down. That's football right there. Yeah. I see it every week yeah, across the table. Ticky tack call. I don't like it. First and 10 Mountaineers. Greer launches that one down the far sideline, and it's hauled in by David Sills. Big gainer for the Mountaineers. 36 yards. Love how they pull defenders because of fakes and the movement of the quarterback. Huge play up the sideline. 
Crawford, who's been running a lot more out of the pistol. They say it's helped his vision and his patience quite a bit, and he lumbers through there for eight. Again, you see the fake try to pull down defenders. Look like he's going to run. Chris Boyd, number two on the outside, gets sucked down, and he goes to one of his favorite targets, David Sills. Red zone factor right here, top of your screen. Number 13 leads the nation, Beth, with 18 touchdown catches. Sills will block right here for Jennings. He's got the first down out at the 10-yard line. Bumped out by Deshaun Elliott. Gary Jennings, what an amazing story. We talk about Sills and White. He's got 82 catches coming into this game. Only one TD, but he does the dirty work in between the 20s for this offense. Three different receivers could potentially hit 1,000 yards for the year today. Those are the kinds of weapons at Will Greer's disposal. Texas feels like they have an advantage with their bigger corners in the tighter areas down in the red zone in one-on-one. -on -one. Crawford gets to the outside. Bowls his way through Elliott. Did he get to the pylon? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Mountaineers. This is a tremendous run. The question is, was he in? No. I see a foot out of bounds. The question is, where's the ball when that foot hits the out of bounds? I think it hit it. Prior to that happening, Ben. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there, this is coming really back. On there the is the foot of a touchdown. Right it's under review. Yeah. So they'll probably go back. And, can't tell there, but it's roughly the one, one and a half yard line. But that's a physical run by Justin Crawford on the perimeter. Something West Virginia feels like they can take advantage of today. That was 53 Colton McKivitz who helped him get the edge. Even though this is probably going to come back here, a glimpse at the power of Crawford, who carried Elliott with him for a couple yards. Justin, by the way, 101 yards shy of a 1,000-yard season. He's a more missing space kind of guy. Right there, you see a little bit of that physicality on the edge. A determined running back right there getting into the red zone. A team that normally throws a ton, Beth. You know, they're getting it to the receivers. They tend to pull it out of his, his gut sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> he wants that football. He's trying to get into that end zone before they start launching those passes. We talk about that mesh point all the time, and that's, you know, sometimes that quarterback doesn't want to give, and that running back says, hey, that's mine. After reviewing the play, when the runner stepped out of bounds, the ball was at the one and a half yard line. It'll be second down. Please reset the game clock. Five minutes, 21 seconds. They've converted 37 of their 42 red zone drives, 30 of those resulting in TDs. And the rain has just cranked open again. Coming down in buckets. Second and goal from the one and a half. Travon Wesco, a tight end, joins Elijah Wellman as blockers in the backfield. Crawford down inside the one, wrapped up by Davis. Davis doing a nice job. We saw him, he got a penalty earlier, but again, the forcefulness of the cornerback position for Texas is glaring to me. That's something I didn't see last year. Guys, I'm back here in the engine. It's absolutely coming down in buckets right now. Wide receivers are trying to wipe their hands off. Running backs trying to get their hands dry to maybe take this hand off. Third and goal. Greer with the fake and the rollout. He's gonna go for it himself. And he gets it. Touchdown, West Virginia. Oh, look at that finger. Wow. Oh, and Will Greer is hurt on the play. What a t he's, there's no emotion on him right now. They're going to have to pop that in. He, his middle finger looks to be crooked. Dave Kearns, the trainer who's been here when I was a player. Ruling on the field of a touchdown is under review.
Yeah, the question is, I'll tell you, Beth, that ball looks like it may have dislodged yes. from his hands prior to getting to the goal line. Excellent job by number 19, Brandon Jones, the safety, poking it out and pulling his arm and tugging it. Now, the question is, did he lose control prior to the white line and the ball touching the white line? Or if not, if it was, Beth, that will be a touchback. I, I, what do you think? I think it's out. I think it's out. But was it, did he slam it onto the ground? And that's why it popped out on the goal line to break the plane. Yeah, it, it looks like this ball is coming loose. Again, great effort by 19. That ball is loose. Yes. The question is, yep. can, do you have a verifiable angle to show that that ball is not touching the white impact when that ball dislodges? And then, unfortunately, at the tail end of that play, you, the the throwing hand, Will Greer's finger slammed right into the ground. Guys, Will Greer was in a ton of discomfort down there. Look like they were trying to pop that finger back in place. Looked like they were able to do that, but now they have just taken him into the locker room to look at us some more. This is what happens now, Beth. You're going to have some swelling in that area. There's going to be tough soreness holding that football. And now enter a quarterback who potentially may have to take some snaps here at the goal line situation if this is not ruled a touchdown. That would be Chris Chuganoff, the sophomore, who's played in two games. Is this fumbled, by the way, through the end zone for a touchback? That's the other thing yeah. they got to consider here, which means they'd lose the ball. Again, very close. It, it does look like that ball dislodges slightly prior to hitting that white. It is tough to tell, Beth, for me, if the tip of that ball is hitting that white at all, it'd be nice to have that down the down the line angle, which would be clear for us to see it. To me, you're almost, you're saying it, it looks short. It's close. It's, to me, it's not definitive enough, but it's it's definitely moving that football around that line. And he falls awkwardly and again does he even feel the pain of that the guy's like it may have been a shock situation yeah. so they're looking about whether this is going to be a touchdown or a touchback which would go to texas after reviewing the play the runner fumbled the football prior to breaking the plane the goal line when the ball was loose it hit the runner who was now out of bounds. By rule, the result of the play will be a touchback. The ball belongs to Texas at the 20 yard line, first down. Brandon Jones was the defender for the Longhorns that knocked it loose from Greer. Well, Texas fans should be happy about the physicality and the determination by the defense that they're showing on the field week in and week out. And right there, Jones pays huge dividends as Greer not only doesn't make it in, but injures his hand, his throwing hand, on the play. And the Mountaineers, have they lost both a touchdown and their starting quarterback? He is back in the locker room getting his hand, his throwing hand, looked at. And now the Longhorns will take over at their own 20. Sam Ellinger has come on at quarterback. And the freshman from Austin, Texas, will hand it off to Tennille Carter, the freshman from Houston. So Ellinger, who has five starts himself this year, returning from an injury last week and getting some time again today. He's a wild horse, Beth. He's got strong lower torso. His groin, his long legs and powerful body really gives him an opportunity. Specialist situations is those third downs, thirds and shorts. He becomes a really a weapon, but he struggles with ball placement. That's the biggest issue. He's not a great passer, but he is a determined runner. And he may have just lost an offensive lineman in front of him, Patrick Vahe. We've already documented the injury issues they've had. Alex Anderson is in to replace him. And he's the one lineman bet that started every game. Unbelievable for this Texas team. Carter hitting the backfield, nowhere to go. David Long, the junior out of Cincinnati with the tackle. What you got for us, Adnan? Well, Beth, just an update what's happening with Louisiana Monroe. They're taking on Auburn. Of course, the Tigers had that great win last week. 7-0 here on fourth and goal. Brian Williams punching it in. So 7-all right now. It's on ESPN2, almost through one. Beth? Tony Gibson said that he would lean towards not blitzing as much 
when Ellinger is in the football game. Let's see if the defense decides to man up or bring some in the front in front of him. They're coming after him. Got the pass away in time, and it's incomplete. Out across midfield, and it's fourth down. White was coming. Benton was coming. Elijah Battle was in the hunt. A tough, tough, tough for Ellinger here. He's going to get pressure in his face. He's going to have to put a perfect pass and drop this over the top. And like I said, ball placement. It's tight coverage, almost picked. He's going to have to extend the football a little farther down the play. Three straight punts here for Texas. And a fair catch by Sills after a 40-yard punt. New quarterback for West Virginia, who's already had a couple of scores wiped off the board. Well, the ESPN app is a fan's best friend. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live, at home, or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. The rain's not going to stop him from popping out the phone. This is the new quarterback, Chris Chuganov, the sophomore out of Skillman, New Jersey, his third game of the year, replacing the injured Will Greer. One of the top passers in the country got knocked out of the game. Their last possession has not yet returned from the locker room. Chuganov quickly out to Gary Jennings. Chuganov is a guy that doesn't have great mobility. It doesn't have that kind of skill set to extend plays. He backed up Skylar Howard last year and now Greer. Again, he's someone that can make all the throws, but he's been very limited, like you said, Beth, in his action this year with Will Greer taking the majority of the snaps. Crawford behind him in the pistol. Chugging off to throw again to Jones. Got a nice block from Sills on the edge. He'll be a couple yards shy. Third and short, Brandon Jones with the stop. Again, he's got game experience. He is a junior, so so that's a that's a good thing. Redshirt sophomore in his third year, but uh, th this is someone you'll see a lot of quick passing game. Get him warmed up, get his arm active if he has to play an extended period of time. Beth trips to the short side on third and three. Crawford with the carry, and he's going to be close as he gets out to the 45-yard line. It's all on the spot. Great penetration by number 44, Brecken Heger. He's been a disruptive force on film on the edge. Didn't play a lot early in the season, but he's been a guy that's been a game changer. And because of his presence on that last play, forcing this West Virginia offense to punt. Junior out of Austin, Texas, whose father starred for the Longhorns. And on fourth and one, West Virginia's going to boot it. Hempel Maps is back at his 16-yard line. Fair catch back inside the 10. Adnan's got some news on the Canes for us. All right, Beth, thank you very much. Just to update us right now in Virginia and Miami. How about Kurt Benkert? 10 for 10 for 178. This is with Joe Reed. This is the biggest lead for a Virginia team versus a top 10 opponent since 2005. Miami's down 14-0. It's on ABC. We're almost through one. Beth? Wow, more chaos perhaps. Virginia right now beating Miami. Here's the other notable games coming your way, including Oklahoma on deck. And out to L.A. primetime on ABC for Donald and Rosen. Ellinger stays in at quarterback. Carter is offset. Play action. And he's got a man open at the 25. It's Humphrey. Caught from behind by Kazir, first down for the Longhorns. And that's what Ellinger can do. He's going to scramble, he's going to run, and you have to come up and try to be a tackler, and he's able to find the open receiver. That's a very nice job of him developing that in his game, getting the ball out accurate to his receiver. Back to the ground game, lunging 
Out across the 30 is Carter. Rose tripped him up. One of the things that Tom Herman has talked about, despite the 5-5 five and five record, they've been able to establish a mentality here, Anthony, of playing hard and playing physical. They've had given themselves chances to win pretty much every game so far this year. They need one more here to get bowl eligible. When you enter the building as a new coach, you set and change the culture, and you got to start on day one and make sure everybody buys in on what you want as a as a coach and that toughness and playing great defense. I know he's an offensive mind, but he knows that if you don't play great defense, especially in this conference, you've got no shot of being where this Texas team wants to be back into that glory area in the potential playoff. And what he wants to start the second quarter is a third down conversion. 0 for 3 in that first quarter. West Virginia and Texas scoreless through one on a wet and cold day in Morgantown. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Vizio. A downpour now in Morgantown as we start the second quarter. And the Longhorns looking for their first third down conversion of the day. Ellinger's legs, Beth, that's the big key on these third and shorts. Pressure coming up the middle. Ellinger lobs it over the top, and it is caught at the 40-yard line. Still on his feet is Hip Hill Maps all the way down to the 20. And a big hitter on the third down. Good for 50 yards. They bring the house, Beth. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Who can win down the sidelines? Hemphill Maps does a nice job of catching a high ball. Great touch by Sam, putting that ball up high. Let his receiver get it. They got after the freshman, Kenny Robinson, in coverage. First and 10 Longhorns. Carter, stuffed and thrown back. More changes up front for Texas. We told you about the injury to Patrick Vahe, the starting left guard. So at last check, what do we got? Connor Williams at left tackle. Shackelford has moved in at center, and CUNY has moved over to left guard. McMillan and Kerstetter stay on the right. Second and 12. Ellinger, QB draw. Dives down to about the 17-yard line, and here comes third down again. And that's what defensive coordinator Tony Gibson was worried about when Sam Ellinger is in the game because he's a runner. He can mash it. If they continue to try to mash the football, utilize his legs, get the backs involved, they don't feel like they're, they have as much as an advantage on the defensive side with some of their hybrid players. Rain has let up again for them here on third and seven. Looking left, caught by Lorenzo Joe, and he looks to be about a yard short. They have had issues with their kicking game this year. And in fact, their last game, they went for it on fourth down repeatedly in the second half, and they're gonna do it again here. This is a situation that Ellinger thrives in. Remember, 230 pounds, great lower body. Look for him to potentially run this up behind the running back for a short play. Warren is in front of Kyle Porter to the left of the quarterback. Ellinger keeps, he's got it, spinning down to the three-yard line. First and goal, Texas, Rocky. There's a lot of confusion on the West Virginia defense on that play. It looked like they were not lined up properly, two or three guys standing around looking at each other saying, hey, where are we supposed to be? First down, Texas. Fast tempo, Texas. Ellinger appeared to lose his footing, still found his way down to the one-yard line. 
Yeah, you need to have a set defense right now. The tempo's picked up. They're not spreading it out. This defense has to get lined up quickly to give them any chance at all to stop a powerful running quarterback. Ellinger again. Caught and thrown for a loss of a couple. Third and goal. Good push by David Long to get in the backfield, and Kenny Robinson helped him out. He may be an unblockable force for this defense. Every game I've watched him, he has become a behind-the-backfield player on this defensive side for West Virginia. A big third down conversion, then a fourth down conversion to keep the drive alive with their second quarterback of this first half, Sam Ellinger. Got big receivers, Beth, on the outside. At the top of the screen, Colin Johnson, 6-6. Makes it easier for ball placement for quarterbacks. Ellinger with the catch and the touchdown. Kendall Moore from four yards out. Well, he's a fill-in backup tight end, Beth but he's a graduate transfer, so he can pick up the offense. He understands where he needs to be, and nice move there as a defender on the outside. Mike Daniels, the cornerback, decides to shoot under his legs instead of wrapping him up right before the goal line. The third stringer in the game due to injuries, and Kendall Moore, the perfect time for his first catch in burnt orange. Wellinger puts a great ball down the sidelines, tests the true freshman in the secondary, and here comes. It wasn't with his legs, it was with his arm again, getting it to the big third string tight end, rumble and stumbling through the goal line. Home of the New Year's Six at the college football playoff. Uh, bowl season right around the corner of the New Year's Six, getting underway with the Goodyear Cotton Bowl on December 29th. A couple of games on the 30th, and then of course the, the, the semifinals, the Sugar Bowl and the Rose Bowl this year on January 1st. 91 yard drive for the Longhorns, capped off with the touchdown pass, and they take the 7 0 lead. Sims going to bring it out of the end zone. And we'll get back out to the 25, to Adnan in the studio from Big Ten Country. All right, Beth, thank you very much. Updating you on Michigan and Wisconsin. The Badgers right now the number five team in the country. And this is Nick Nelson here. Takes a second, picks it up, and away he goes. A 50-yard punt return. You know, Wisconsin in seven home games has five non-offensive touchdowns. Seven nothing right now for the Badgers against Michigan. Also, Miami updating you now against Virginia. That's Amon Richards at no catches versus Notre Dame. Three for 51 and a touchdown right now. It's 14-7, Beth. Well, that'd be something if Virginia could pull the upset and Wisconsin would be in position to move up into the top four. Of course, this week, the new playoff rankings Alabama Clemson Miami and Oklahoma so right now undefeated Wisconsin on the outside looking in Chris Chuganov remains at quarterback for the injured Will Greer who went out with what appeared to be a nasty hand injury in the first quarter Out across the 30. Rocky? Yeah, with Chuganov in at quarterback, I think that plays right into the hands of the Texas defense. Now they can start blitzing more, being much more aggressive with Chuganov not being near the run threat. Can somebody get Rocky another <laughs> plastic bag? He may need to cover something up. He's got everything <laughs> covered up down it's there. Pretty wet. It's, it's so oh, weird. Yeah. It will rain hard and then stop. Rain hard, then stop. And these players are trying to get used to that sort of tempo as well. Seeing some freezer bag and sandwich bag commercials <laughs> in Rocky's future. You got any more? Send them down, Beth. <laughs> Third and one for the Mountaineers. Crawford extends the drive. As we talked about at the top, both these teams still in the chase, albeit an outside shot, to get into the Big 12 championship game at the end of the year. Right now, Oklahoma and TCU are in the driver's seat. TCU has the big tiebreaker right now over both Oklahoma State and West Virginia. 
And Texas, you know, listen, they want to finish strong. They want to build on the poor start early in the season. And this would be a huge win if they could continue to play like they're playing right now early on against West Virginia. Trips left for Chuganov. And the clock ran down on him. Did they get the timeout? Delay of game. Nope. Offense, five yard penalty. It's first down. This is part of the quarterback's deal, right? You don't get a lot of snaps. You don't see the play clock. They're kind of going along. A lot of things you got to start putting into that helmet and knowing and observing so that you can keep your team ahead of the chains. Right now, getting pulled back, not a good thing for this Mountaineer offense. Off the play action, and the catch was made by Karan White. May have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Jason Hall with the tackle. Todd Orlando down here on Texas sideline, the defensive coordinator, keeps yelling out to his cornerbacks and putting his hand over his head, essentially saying, don't let anything get over your head right now in this situation. And how will Dana Holgerson press his wide receivers and quarterbacks to go deep. I don't know. We haven't seen any deep balls yet, but it'd be interesting to see how many they get or try moving forward. Chuganov had only attempted 16 passes all season prior to coming on. There is the deep ball and too deep. Intended for David Sills, third down. The one thing that's going to be tough for Chuganov is when Greer's in there, the movement and understanding where guys are and putting the ball in placement because of your experience with three receivers, that's really all they rotate in in the football game. They take virtually every snap. Chuganoff doesn't get those opportunities to find those windows and holes. So you're going to see some miscommunication on some of those passes and routes early on until he finds a flow uh, versus this defense. Two of six on third down so far in the first half. Pressure coming. Chuganoff's pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage by Jason Hall. Yeah, Jason Hall is a player they're putting on the edge of the line, a bigger safety player, linebacker body, along with the three down lineman. And again, he's going to come up on the edge and just get his hands up. They're going to bring some pressure. Listen, you get a new quarterback in there, Rocky will tell you, the one thing you do is you try to light him up and put some bodies in front of him. Nice awareness getting a hand up and blocking that football. And Phil Maps going to give it a go. And nowhere to go for him. Down at the 14 after the 49 yard punt and a one yard return. ESPN College Football brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, a century of innovation. And Pizza Hut, the best pizza delivery deal. Order today with a large two topping pizza for just $7.99. Senior day for Karan and Kaiser White. Mom and dad, Kevin Senior and Tammy. Both guys have a shot at joining big brother Kevin in the NFL next year. Well, Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoffs, so be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. They have toughed it out today on a rainy and cold day in Morgantown. Hoping to cheer on West Virginia to a third win in a row, but right now it's Texas. A win away from bowl eligibility, up 7-zip. And Sam Ellinger has taken over at quarterback after Shane Bouchelle got the start. That's Danny Young out of the backfield. David Long upended him. I've been impressed with his arm, throwing the football. Nice deep ball earlier. Uh, you know, really not being a big part of the run run side of it but he's been effective going five for six 78 yards since he's entered the game number four rated dual threat quarterback coming out of Westlake High School in Austin they've had some awfully good ones in the area over the years and it's really been a, a two-man rotation with Ellinger and Duchelle all season long due to injuries is young Gets a couple back. Dylan Tonkery on the tackle, and it's third down. It's kind of been a mixed bag at the running back position, Beth. Young, Carter, Warren, who started the season. Now he's the movable piece in the backfield, playing tight end. So a lot of different guys. And then also you plug in the offensive line. Let's see if they can put something together here on third and four.
Catch is made, and they've got the first down. Out across the 25, the Devin Duvernay. Let's take a look at who's been putting in work. Brought to you by Carhartt. Yeah, Sam Ellinger has. Uh, this is the last drive. Great ball. Look at the ring, folks. That's tough to throw the football and drop it in. Then you see the toughness. Thick lower body. This kid is strong. And again, finding the pass in their third string tight end. Really just having some consistency. Right now showing a lot of uh, positive right now for this offense. Young's got it, trying to turn the corner and out to the 30, Rocky. Been really impressed with this Texas offensive line blocking Tony Gibson in West Virginia's defense. Hasn't brought a ton of pressure, but just like we saw last play, they brought it, they they, they went in, they, they served it up. And this is also without Patrick Baje, the left guard. He went in, he's still getting looked at. Well, direct snap it on the Wildcat, and Humphrey is cut down behind the line. David Long with a terrific push. Most of his plays, folks, are behind the line of scrimmage. He's a smaller guy, only 5'11". You better find a white jersey if I'm Texas to get on him, because if not, he'll wreck your day. At a school record, seven tackles for loss in their Oklahoma State game. Third and nine here for the Horns. Ellinger. Getting chased and gets away. Trying to make a play with his feet. Ellinger's got the first down, streaking down the sideline and out across the 45. Unbelievable. West Virginia is going to drop nine players and keep one rusher. Watch this, folks. Everybody pulls out. Look at the defensive lineman. Every, and they almost get a sack with one guy. But Ellinger, he's someone that can extend. You better find ways to tackle him. Excellent job by the receivers blocking upfield. It's a nice play by Texas. I disagree with just only having one rusher up there. It just gives too much space for a guy like Ellinger to run with his legs. 17 yards on the game, Rocky, after Tonkery and Benton both missed. I've seen some crazy things by Tony Gibson, defensive coordinator. That might have been one of the craziest by that defense. The throwback to the quarterback. Ellinger got some blockers in the Mountaineer territory. And down to the 30-yard line. The former QB from a couple of years ago, Gerard Hurd, tossed it back to Sam. Look at the play design here. They're going to have the motion receiver come outside. He gets it. Hurd throws it. Remember, folks, former quarterback for Texas. Look at the guys, the big uglies out front, in space, running down the field. Shackleford. CUNY was CUNY out there. CUNY also, you're right there, making good plays. Nice job mixing it up by Texas. A gain of 23. Young. Helmet came yeah, off of a West Virginia defender. Pagis will have to come out for a play. Young picked up five. Texas 53 yards on the ground so far in the first half. Churning the clock, Beth. <laughs> Last year we saw Texas, they try to score in 30 seconds. Now with Ellinger back there, Pushing the ball down the field, utilizing time, resetting, bringing the clock down, methodically moving the ball down the field. Good cutback by Kyle Porter to the 15-yard line. Adnan. All right, Beth, it's the AT&T field pass, and after Virginia fumbled it, Malik Rozier on the first play goes to Dale Harris. All day, every day. 36 yards. 14 all right now. Midway through the second. It's on ABC. Kane's back in business, Beth. All leaving at 14 apiece. The injured player here for West Virginia is Kenny Robinson. Started out at safety. They moved him to corner and then eventually came back over to safety after Toyus Avery got hurt. We'll take the quick time out here. 3.03 to go in the half. Tonight on ABC, it's Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. UCLA's got Josh Rosen, USC's got Sam Darnold. The Trojans still trying to keep their college football playoff hopes alive. They will be representing the South in the Pac-12 championship game. It's Bruins-Trojans tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC. 
Scoring drive of 91 yards already today, trying to cap off an 87-yard drive here. This is the 10th play. West Virginia is screaming about movement in the backfield. Chris Warren. Ball start. Offense. Number 25. <laughs> fell out of his stance. Five yards. You think? Penalty. Yeah, that's first down. <laughs> it took little him bit, a bit. Took the, I don't know if the ref <laughs> couldn't find his flag or what we're waiting, but 25. Warren playing Whoop. tight end. He was in an up stance. He's not supposed nope, to be in a down nope. stance. <laughs> Although that was a heck of a sell there. Just couldn't quite hold his water. Tried to hide it. Fourth play, 45 yards so far. Back out to the 20. Ellinger's got a man running up the scene. It's Warren breaking a tackle. Touchdown, Texas. Now we know why he was rocking in his stance. He was excited, Beth, to get off the line of scrimmage. Here's a young man that was a tailback, 235 pounds. Now they got him at H back. Nice sell inside. And they just slip him up the middle, and he takes on the big hit. Didn't even feel it. That's how big and strong he is. Nice catch and throw by Texas. And that's so tough for a linebacker to see when that fullback comes out, and he comes vertical up the field instead of out into the flat. You don't see that too much. Mitchell Becker with the PAT. It is a 10-play, 87-yard scoring drive. And... Chris Warren staying in the game, staying in the lineup. Right now, West Virginia has no answers. Tony Gibson needs to figure out how to stop this man, Sam Ellinger, as he's running all over the field and then now beating you with his arm. Tough combination. Texas up. Two touchdowns. Plenty for the Longhorns to celebrate right now. Two long scoring drives, the last capped off. Sam Ellinger, 20-yard pass to Chris Warren. The newly converted H-back in a 14-0 lead. If Texas wins, they're bowl eligible for the first time in three years. And a chance for Tom Herman and his coaches to get a lot more practice time with his guys. Marcus Sims cut down just shy of the 30. Adnan, what you got coming up for us? Well, Beth, coming up on the Lexus half to report, maybe a letdown for Miami after that huge win against Notre Dame. They're taking in Virginia. That's over on ABC. Also, Wisconsin's trying to stay unbeaten. Highlights from the Badgers and Wolverines. And maybe trouble in the Plains for Auburn. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, and me. By the way, Beth, Joey, your old partner, birthday coming up soon. Back to you. I was just about to say a big day coming up for the Bel Air, Ohio native from just across the West Virginia border. Yep. Martel Petaway is the offset back. Beth Mullins, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman. Caught out in the flat by Gary Jennings. The big play so far in the first half, the injury to Will Greer, what looked like a scoring play, ended up being a fumble out of the end zone for a touchback, and Greer Badly injured his throwing hand on the play. We haven't seen him since. Well, the ball's in West Virginia court now. What do you do? How do you utilize the quarterback situation? Do you keep it the same? Do you run the ball more? It just really takes them off schedule with Jake Spav Spavadol wants to do the offensive coordinator for this West Virginia offense to be successful. Either way, Anthony, they got to find a way to get number 13, David Sills, involved in this game. He's a playmaker. Just one catch so far, Rocky. He was good for 34 yards. He's only been targeted twice. Top touchdown maker in the country. They looked for him there, but chugging off couldn't connect with him. Got to have accuracy. Doesn't get many reps. I mean, listen, Will Greer takes all the snaps. When you're a backup quarterback, it's not a great job. you got to come in and be on point. Not accurate. He's disappointed in himself, and he's right. He's got to take advantage of these situations right now. Texas having some success now with some mistakes and some mis mis uh, inaccurate passes by the quarterback. Four of seven, 27 yards. Timeout from the Texas side with a third and 11 coming up. One thirty-seven to go here in the first half. Texas with a two touchdown lead. 
Sam Ellinger coming on, uh, Anthony, in relief of uh, Bouchelle, and he's made all the difference. He really has. His legs, his running, and his passing has been quite a surprise and really has caught West Virginia's defense off guard. You know, they tried to bring pressure on him. Then he gets they get beat over the top one-on-one, -on -one, and then they play a little of that mash ball uh, down the middle. But here's him, you know, fourth and one. Give him the football when it's close. And then beating him with his arm. I mean, you know, these are short passes, but you wouldn't expect too much of it. And then when you can make a play in the pocket, when you only got one rusher, you find a way to get a first down. West Virginia thinks they have a chance, and nobody's there to make the tackle. And then he finds former tailback converted tight end H-back Warren for a touchdown. Great number, seven for eight, consistency, playing smart, not making crucial mistakes. Highly recruited out of Westlake High School in Austin. Now his counterpart. Uh, counterpart chugging off trying to convert a third down and it's dropped by David Sills so a couple of drops some frustration for the West Virginia receivers and it's fourth down well they miss him on a pass because of inaccuracy and then he gets one right in his hands and he's dropped it we've seen a couple drops both teams again you got to find that football it's a little wet out ball gets damp it's been a while, too, since this Mountaineer team has been shut out in the first half, Beth. Yeah, and keep keep in mind, the last two games, which they've won, they were scoreless in the second half. They would need to change that if they were going to get back in it. Whistles on the punt. And this ended up being short. It's back out near the 40-yard line from Billy Kinney, just 23 yards on that punt. We'll kick off your week 11 with Sunday NFL countdown at 10 Eastern on ESPN. Anthony, it's the fifth anniversary of the butt fumble. Oh. Five years ago, the crew will count down some of the other biggest blunders in NFL history and the best catch, uh, catches from the weekend. And you got Mossed. And then on Monday night, Seattle has an 11-game winning streak. On Monday night football, they will host the Falcons. It all starts with Monday night countdown at 6 Eastern, served up by Applebee's. Minute and a half to go for Texas. Try and get some more on the board. Ellinger, so elusive with the ball in his hands, weaving his way into West Virginia territory and a gain of 16. This is not what West Virginia wanted. Tony Gibson was worried about this young man playing quarterback for things just like that. Moving around the pocket, looked like a design run, and that's 12 big yards right there that no one was around in the tackle. Again, just the three-man rusher. Ellinger has the time, and it's broken up by White. Well, watch this. Ellinger, again, design run, sets it up. A little bit of a QB draw, and he's got some wiggle. Look at that. A little lean. Look a little Tebow-esque there. Same kind of body type, Beth, when you look at these guys. This kid is thick. And I'm telling you now, he's, he's a strong young man, only a true freshman. It's unbelievable how big this guy is. He's run for 46. He's thrown for a buck seven, including a couple of TD throws here in the first half. Now off the play action. Flag down in the backfield. And Ellinger will just chuck it. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Offense number 68, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's second down. It's the true freshman playing right tackle, Derek Kirkstetter. And that's a huge mistake there. Really pushes it back. Maybe West Virginia now has an advantage. Second and 25. You're going to play back. You're going to force the quarterback to beat you with his arm, but don't let him get the big chunks. Something Texas is taking advantage of right now with the QB position. Five penalties for the Horns in the first half. Ellen to Humphrey. Immediately wrapped up by Al Rashid Benton, the leading tackler, the senior for West Virginia. They got four yards back, but a long way to go on third down. Tony Gibson said he's the smartest linebacker ever, great team leader. He knows every position on the football field. He can draw up every snap. Can he get this defense off the field on third and 21? Well, and Anthony, why aren't they using a timeout here? Are they just going to let this 
wind down. Got to regroup, Beth. This quarterback hasn't taken a lot of snaps. You got to re kind of do your offense right now. They got one of the best punters in the game. It's going to be a direct snap, too, to Hemphill Maps, the wide receiver. And there, Herman calling the timeout with six seconds to go. Tuesday night at 7 Eastern on ESPN, it's the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings presented by Capital One. Reese and the guys will break it all down for you. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Wisconsin and Miami presently having some problems. They're both tied in their games today. Alabama is rolling, so is Clemson. Our college football playoff rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Every week, something new, right, Beth? You never know what you're going to get. Uh, some tight games, and I think, you know, right now, I think the committee's got it right. I mean, this isn't the exact order I have it, but I have the general, the same teams. They're, they've been the best. Those first six there have definitely played the best ball. There are still potentially four games, by the way, between those top ten teams still to be played. So it's back to Ellinger at quarterback here. And they'll just hand it off to Porter. And that'll take care of the first half. A good second quarter for Ellinger and the Longhorns and a two touchdown lead. Now let's get you back to the studio. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Vizio. 14-0. Texas, the lead over West Virginia as we take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Pizza Hut. Yeah, and I think the difference right now, Beth, in that first half is Sam Ellinger and the defense, number one for West Virginia, instead of dropping nine or eight guys against him, you've got to get some more people around the box. Force him to pass. That's not his strong suit. I know he's had some big completions in the first half, but you've got to make sure you stop the run. If they become a mash team, you just don't have the size up front. And for, for Texas, you continue to do what they're doing. You play off what the defense has given you. And, and the quarterback position has been consistent, and they haven't seen that in a while. Beth Mullins, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman with you today. Will Greer was hurt in the first half, a bad hand injury. We did not see him return to the game. Let's take a look at... This limp-worthy play brought to you by Goodyear. We go back to Sam Ellinger. Yeah, because of his size on fourth and one, he's an easy guy to get the ball to to get those big yards. Here, West Virginia drops nine, ten guys on this play. Not good. You think you have everybody there to block and, and pick them up. They couldn't make a tackle. He makes a big play. And again, open lanes, the quarterback draw. Uh, you have to find ways to stop something he's doing, Beth. Yep. I'm leaning on the run and let him beat you with his arm if he can. Over 150 total yards for Ellinger. Gotten a big boost from this Texas defense, too. The West Virginia offense it averages over 500 yards per game, held to under 200 in that first half. And Ellinger's first play of this third quarter goes to little Jordan Humphrey, Rocky Boyman. Yeah, I was able to catch up with head coach Dana Holgerson. He said, Will Greer's out. He's done. And now for Chuganoff, he said, he spins it pretty good. We just got to find a way to make him comfortable out there. But I got to tell you this, guys, on Texas's side, watching Sam Ellinger, I judge a quarterback by their body language. This kid, at just a freshman, walks around, his chest is out. He looks really confident out there, and his team is playing like that. He's got it here on second and eight. And he'll hand it off to to Neil Carter for a couple of yards. David Long with the stop. So that's a bad break for West Virginia. It does not appear that Greer will be back and certainly calls into question whether he'd be able to play next week against Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean, you know, Coach, I believe, said it was broke. So if that's the fact, it will be hard. And this is a big third down. I know it's only the first one of the second half, but this West Virginia has lacked, this defense has lacked getting off the field. You see more guys in the box force something out of the quarterback's arm down the field. And then they drop all but one. They read out the receiver's screen, and Colin Johnson corralled immediately by David Long. It's fourth down. Yep, they did it again, right? They dropped 10 guys on that defensive play, but this time Texas wasn't able to get a play design, fell right in their hands with the quick uh, wide receiver screen, and David Long right on the spot with the big tackle. Sims and Sills will go back deep, awaiting the punt of Michael Dixon. 
Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Year last season. A terrific year so far for Michael. Wow, kick is away, and it's a boomer chasing Sims all the way back to his own 10-yard line. He'll try and circle around, and he finds a seam out across the 25. 60 yards on that Dixon punt, 17 on the return. And it's Chris Chuganoff ready to go for the second half. Remember, this is a West Virginia offense that has not scored in the second half of their last two games, but they had the lead and still won those two. And this is what happens. You go in the locker room, you sit down with your coordinator, and you find 10 plays that you feel comfortable with at the quarterback position. And he'll probably pick half of them and find out which ones will work so you can come out and have some idea and some confidence to build to try to get something drummed up on offense. Appearing in a game for just the third time this year. Jennings. So far, he's been the only effective guy receiving the ball on a lot of those receiver screens, Rocky. Finally, some much needed excitement and energy on this West Virginia sideline. I'll tell you what, Beth, in the first half, lots of hanging heads, lots of guys shaking their heads and looking around, waiting for someone else to make a play. Finally, they got some juice now. Well, and you guys have been through this before where you get, uh, you know, a key player hurt. In this case, it's your quarterback. There's got to be a little bit of time where you're still reeling and in shock that he's not coming back. Crawford. They didn't let him get to the edge. Third down coming up. Puna Ford with the push up the middle. And just and now Crawford's limping. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna come out, I think. We're split out. <laughs> Trying to figure out a guy. And now bring him back in. That'll, that'll loosen him back up, Beth, if yeah. anything. <laughs> I, I think Anthony, he thought he was leaving the game. And now he's back alongside his quarterback. Chugging off. Down the middle. Jennings first down out to midfield. We talked about Jennings. He's the between the 20s guy. Came into the game with 82 catches. It's a nice job. You got to find the windows, right? Spread receivers out. Chugging off over through that last time, Beth, to David Sills. Now it comes back with a more accurate pass. Nice throw and catch. Already the eighth catch of the day for Jennings. That's his average for a game. That's amongst the best in the country. Crawford. Down to the 42, bumped out by Devontae Davis and a gain of six. And I think Justin Crawford or Kennedy McCoy or Martel Petaway are going to be the difference in this game. they got to find ways to potentially bake, break a big run and get some excitement and balance to the offense. Because if you just put it on the quarterback's shoulder as a backup, that's tough to do against a, a defense that's played well for Texas. This time it's going to be Kennedy McCoy in the backfield. Sills is the wide out to the bottom of the screen, and it will be McCoy, and he's got a first down, but a flag trailed him through the hole up the middle. Holding, offense number 62, 10 yard penalty, it's second down. That's guard Kyle Bosch, who's making his 40th career start today. And he's played a lot of snaps here, and he's at the right guard position. And he's going to get the holding call. And again, he'll wrap around. Got to take him on square. 31, more of a, a strong safety body at 6 through 220, able to go underneath. And unfortunately, linemen sometimes grasp guys and right there pulls them down. Paul blitzing off the edge. The delayed handoff to McCoy, and not much room there. Ran into Chris Nelson, and a loss of one. It's third and long. Been impressed, Beth, by the defensive line of Texas. Getting some penetration, making it hard. Hager, 44. Puna, 4, 95. We talked about those would be matchups that were going to be tough for West Virginia up front to block these guys, and they've been able to have disruption and make this offense be in flux.
West Virginia needs to get this down inside the 40. Here comes the heat from the horns. Chugging off. Incomplete and a big hit by Jason Hall to make sure White couldn't come down with it. I've seen Jason Hall line up on the edge of the line of scrimmage. I've seen him come from depth in the, at the linebacker position. Now he makes a big hit off a nice tip by number 18, Devontae Davis, the corner who we've mentioned several times in this game. And the arm strength is just not quite the same without Will Greer at the quarterback position to get that ball in that tight window. On fourth and 15, Kinney kicks it away. And that will bounce into the end zone for the touchback. Texas with a 14-point lead. More from Sam Ellinger on the other side. There's no question that Josh Rosen is the best. He has it all. He's got every pitch. Sam Darnold's ready for the NFL Leadership, right now. charisma. Sam Darnold's been up and down. But he's got the it factor. They're getting ready tonight out in Southern California. Who's going to take home the victory bell? It's been a series dominated by SC of late. You've got Darnold, you got Rosen. It's possible they're going to be two of the top picks in the draft next spring. As Ellinger off the pump will roll out and drop it off to Hemp Hill Map. So what do you think? Uh, you've had a chance to see them both. I did. Well, you heard the background, the it factor. What is the it factor, right? Well, Sam Darnold, to me, has an, an innate ability to shake off mistakes and come back and lead you right down the field. Doesn't show a tremendous amount of emotion. Josh Rosen, to me, has all the, 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 the factors it takes, the size, the arm strength. It's just a little bit of the off-field, the, the mentality. How much does he love football? And is he going to be all in when he gets drafted? Ellinger rifles one across the middle and out across the 40-yard line to Hurd, Rocky. Yeah, I think the one of the most under-talk about things with Sam Donald is his ability to make plays, extend plays with his legs. And I think with where college football is, I think the offensive line across the board is a little bit weak. And also into the NFL, if you're talking about the next level, I think a quarterback who can extend plays and pick up first downs with his legs is key. Kyle Porter out across midfield. He'll be close to the first down marker. Kenny Robinson tripped him up after a gain of nine. That's big for USC. Still an outside shot at the playoff. Right now it looks like the Pac-12 may be locked out. And Ellinger will keep it, and he'll pick up the first down. And that, that this game may be huge for the future of Jim Moore, too, the head coach at UCLA coming up tonight. Yeah, it's a big rivalry. And, and right now for Texas, Beth, the, the holes are too big against this West Virginia defense. I mean, they are just dominating line of scrimmage. You know, welcome back number 55, left tackle Connor Williams. He has been a big part of this running game, and he looks as if he's never missed a game after the last seven weeks. Ellinger, nice job to hang on to it. It's the reverse to Hemphill Maps. Ellinger trying to stick a block on the DB and down to the 40-yard line. It ends up gaining five. I think Connor Williams just added some much-needed confidence and swagger to this offensive line. Just his ability, he's a commanding presence. He's pushing guys around out there. I think the rest of the line is feeding off his physicality. He's nasty. He's a nasty player. Big 12, you wouldn't think about Lyman being nasty. He showed you the first play of the game, what kind of player he is. Nice misdirection there from Kyle Porter, and that'll move the chains again. Gain 16. What did the coaches tell us? We, we'd be ecstatic to have Connor for a few plays. I don't know if he's come out yet. He's been back to form, playing in front of his brother, by the way, who's a GA on the West Virginia staff. So he's got some family here. Looking very much like a top 15 NFL prospect if he chose to go. That's what our experts are saying. Ellinger airs it out, end zone, and almost picked off. Mike Daniels had it, and it was actually Heard that broke it up. Yeah, I would say not the advantageous choice for a throw from Ellinger. 
down the sidelines. We saw one earlier almost picked. Daniels, Daniels has got to make that throw. You're right. Hurd makes a fantastic play. Kids play quarterback, receiver. Well, guess what? Throw DB on there because yep. he's done a nice job pulling that down. Almost a crucial mistake by the young quarterback. Carter tripped up in the backfield. Guess who? David Long, another TFL. David Long is so impressive. You watch him all week and see it out here today. For a smaller guy, he doesn't get blocked. Some guys are magnets for blockers. He finds a way to get away from him. He's really impressive. Had 50 tackles, 11 TFLs, Beth, coming into this game. He's missed the first four games. He could be close to 100 tackles already this season if he had not missed those games. Coming back from an offseason knee injury, and now it's third and eight, Texas. Blitz coming. Elder runs by it. Another nice move down inside the five-yard line. Hold down awkwardly from behind, but he seems to be okay. What patience. The blitz was coming, and he just he just makes a subtle move to get around all this, and he finds the hole, gets up the field, and makes a big play. 17-yard gain, and then he throws the interception, and this could go all the way back. Kenny Robinson in a foot race. Breaks the tackle at the 30, and Robinson houses it, and the pick six has West Virginia on the board. Dylan Tonkery got to the quarterback, and Robinson took it 93 yards the other way. Was the quarterback down, Anthony? I'll tell you, Tonkery gets in there. I don't see anything no. in the ground. Beth, Kenny Robinson has made some of the biggest defensive plays the last couple weeks. True freshman, 6-2, and Ellinger makes a brutal mistake throwing that ball. We've seen him do a few of those things in the past. West Virginia takes advantage of it. And the one thing Texas couldn't do was make a mistake. Now West Virginia takes advantage of the big touchdown. Wow. Second pick six of the season for Robinson. He also had one against Oklahoma State. The most amazing part about that play is Texas had him with tempo. West Virginia's defense was standing around. They were not lined up and were still able to make a play there. Amazing. Evan Staley is the new kicker for West Virginia. After Mike Molina got hurt earlier in the year and he's got the extra point and it's a one score game. Dylan Tonkery, local native out of Bridgeport, West Virginia makes it happen. And Kenny Robinson takes over, brings it to the house, gives a little fist. Big play. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. He's given the Mountaineer seven right there after the pick six, 93 yards. Kenny Robinson, second time he's done it this year as we Take a look back with our Buick Drive recap. Yeah, Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator, said Kenny Robinson at 18 years old, a true freshman, is a freak. He's raw. He is fearless as a player, and he thinks that he's the best player on the field. Right there, he shows you a little bit of that speed, getting down there for that touchdown, and has got this Mountaineer crowd in a ruckus. 14 to 7, Texas on the road and on top, but West Virginia's making some noise. Adnan and Bert back in our college football studios updating you on Louisiana Monroe and Auburn. That's Cam Martin, the one yard run. So it's 21 7 right now on ESPN 2, midway through the third. And also, Virginia and Miami, what a fun game this is. And how about Kurt Benkert to Daniel Ham? He's got four touchdowns to four different receivers. 28 14 for the Cavs, Beth. It's on ABC. Oh, we're, we're watching on our app, Adnan. We're listening to you guys in the studio. Both Miami and Wisconsin in trouble right now. 
And right now, West Virginia's got the momentum. Texas with the football. And a burst into the second level by Danny Young. And he's got the first down, a gain of 15. Ran right through David Long, impressively enough. It's a heck of a job. And they're going to the left side. Remember, folks, Connor Williams, their left tackle, who's missed seven games. NFL prospect has really made a difference on that left side. And just when West Virginia thought they had momentum, yeah. Texas could come right back at you with this running game. Wow. Jumps back on it at the 40. Sticks it in the belly. Pulls it out and just caught the hip, I guess, the nose of the ball on Young, and it pops out. I tell you, very fortunate there. That's one thing you got to worry about freshmen is when mistakes happen, sometimes they tend to keep happening because they don't have the experience. He's got to find a way to settle down, put that last interception out of his head, and get back to playing the way he was in the first half. Pick six that got West Virginia on the board. 93 yards. It's the fourth longest in Mountaineer history, as a matter of fact. And right now, that defense is getting a little juice out of that. It's third down. Kaiser White with the tackle. A lot of substitutions, Beth, for the Mountaineer defense. Put some athletic bodies on this third down. Ellinger, plenty of time. Incomplete, out of bounds. And the Mountaineers forced the punt. Sills and Sims back deep. Dixon to boot it away. End over end. It's headed for Sims and a fair catch at the 14. A punt of 42 yards. West Virginia going back to work. And now for today's AFLAC trivia question. West Virginia has passed for over 3,000 yards seven times. Six of those coming with Dana Holgerson just once before Holgerson's arrival. Did West Virginia have a 3,000 yard plus passing season? Will Greer the latest to do it this year? So we got to go back into the annals of West Virginia football. I'm guessing that it might be during the Beckian era of the late 80s, early 90s. I don't know, Beth. What do you think? Who was your quarterback? Mark Bulger? Uh, he, he was here during my tenure, yes. Okay. He was okay. one of the guys. Answer to, to follow. We'll let uh, Mountaineer fans and Longhorn fans ponder that one. On second and eight. Jennings has really been the only guy effective through the air. They'll turn it out on the ground here with Kennedy McCoy. Remember, this is an offense that cranks out over 500 per game, top 10 in the country. They're only at 159 right now after losing Will Greer in the first half to an injury. And really couldn't drum up much when he was playing. His Texas defense, give him credit. They've been in the right spots. They've been aggressive in the tackling, and they haven't let Chuganoff get off to a start to get him in a groove. Only three for 10 on third down. Blitz coming up the middle. Another one tipped and almost picked by Devontae Davis. That was redirected right off the arm of Chuganoff, and it's fourth down. A lot of pressure on the right side forces the high throw to touch, and Devontae Davis just sniffs it out, takes on the lineman, and he comes underneath. If his head was inside, Beth, that might have been a pick six. 
And Pill Maps will go back deep on the seventh punt of the day for West Virginia. He's going to have a chance. Spins it back, cuts it upfield, and down to the West Virginia 45. 15 yards on that return. Adnan in the studio. All right, Beth, thank you very much. An update on the Hurricanes taking on Virginia. This Malik Rozier to Lawrence Cager. And Miami in the red zone trying to pick things up a little bit. They're still down by seven. Once again, it's on ABC. Beth? Ladnan, we're looking at the ACC standings. You've got Clemson and Miami. They'll get together in the ACC championship game in a couple of weeks. But, of course, for Miami, that 9-0 record is the big deal. They are still in the playoff chase. In fact, number three in this week's rankings after that huge win over Notre Dame last week. Trying to get back in it against Virginia. And the breakaway, Danny Young rumbling down inside the 15. And out at the 10 after a 36-yard run. True freshman's running hard. Again, going to the left side. Nice interior blocking by number 51, CUNY. And he does the rest. Uses power and speed up the sideline. It's a running game, Beth, that they have not been able to lean on the past couple games and getting some nice showings by some of these backs. He'll check out. Replaced by Porter. Kyle's got it. Getting a block on the edge. Kyle Porter, touchdown Texas. With Hurd and Moore leading the way. What a response by the Longhorns after the pick six. They charge right down the field and answer. One back goes out. Beth makes a big play. Another one comes in. Offensive line has been tremendous so far in this game and been able to carry the way for Texas so far. Mitchell Becker makes it 21 to 7. This could be a wind back run, start right, and then come back left, led by the third string tight end, number 88, Kendall Moore, with a nice block. And really, Beth, nobody's home. They're getting the momentum to go to the right and then coming back. Excellent play design on the cutback run. And that's the danger of running this 3-3 scheme there is you don't have the solidity on the defensive line. Those linebackers tend to really fast flow. And with a zone run like that, they flowed way over too fast. He cut it back and made a nice run. That was the key. Thank you, Rocky. We've got another studio update with Adnan. All right, Beth, thank you very much. It's Shaquan Johnson here, pick six, Virginia, Miami. Stop us if you've heard this before. The turnover chain back in full effect. We're now tied in Miami. It's on ABC, Beth. Miami coming back. The pick six for the Canes. Not so good news for, uh, for Whiskey up outside Mickey's Dairy Bar. They have fallen behind Michigan now couple of undefeated teams struggling today. We've got a minute 23 to go here in the third. Sam Ellinger has really taken hold at the quarterback spot this afternoon for the Longhorns. A couple of TD passes and a couple of long scoring drives. The only miscue was a doozy, a pick six, but a 21-7 lead. Sims out to the 25. How about our Aflac trivia question and answer? West Virginia, 3,000 plus yards under Dana Holgerson from a quarterback. When was the last time they did it before Dana got here? 1998, Beth, Mark Bolger, 3,600 yards. And oh, what a, here we go. What a season it was. Oh, yeah. A lot of great targets to throw to. There's Sean Foreman, or excuse me, David Saunders. We had Sean Foreman. One of our other receivers on the outside. These guys made plays. But the and, big fella. And when Mark Bolger needed to make a real play, he went to none other than that guy. <laughs> Pretty fired up. Look at him lugging and stumbling. And With the biggest shoulder pads in the Holy history smokes. of college football, Anthony Beck. Fun times. A bit, bit, bit of an underachieving team, though, that year. I'm not going to lie to you, Beck. Going deep on wow. first and ten. It is caught. Did he stay in bounds? Marcus Sims got it. 32-yard strike. They're going to try to get up to the line quickly. It's a heck of a catch. 
quickly see it. On the field of a catch is under review. That looks good to I me, Ben. So. Yep. One heck of a catch. DB in your face. I mean, honestly, that's about as good defense you can play. Right, number 19, Jones, and the concentration level was unbelievable by Sims. Dana Holgerson, he said to me at halftime, this kid can spin it if we just give him enough time. He had a little time, perfectly thrown ball. Sims, who has been their deep threat, averaging 19 yards per catch. The foot was definitely down. And remember, you got to complete the catch all the way through it, even if it takes you out of bounds by 15 yards and into the uh, into the bench. But apparently he does hang on. Oh, yeah, and the ball doesn't have to come to his body to show complete control. As long as it's in his hands, not moving, and his feet are in bounds, which it looks like it is. After reviewing the play, Lulig on the field is confirmed. It's first down. A couple of 32-yard catches today for Marcus Sims. And now they're into Texas territory from the 43-yard line. Hall's coming off the edge. Blitz is picked up, giving Chuganoff some time, and he completes the pass to Karan White. And a gain of seven. He took a couple steps back, wasn't quite sure if it was going to get picked up. Line does a nice job. Good job by White coming back to the football to make sure as that DB was coming through him from behind. Guys, a lot of trash talking on both sides going on down the field right now. You can tell this is an intense game. <laughs> It's a big one for West Virginia to keep their hopes alive to get into the Big 12 championship game. And a big one for Texas. Bowl eligibility awaits. McCoy down to the 25 and a first down. Six foot, 200 pounds, long running back. And he really has been the finisher, Beth, last couple games and some of their wins in the fourth quarter. And We'll enter that now, see if West Virginia can make this a, a ball game here on this drive. One of the most potent offenses in the country, stymied by a Texas defense and the loss of their starting quarterback. Can they crank it back up in the fourth? Morgantown, West Virginia. Texas leading the Mountaineers 21 to 7 as we get set to start the fourth quarter. It has been five stanzas now without an offensive touchdown for West Virginia. They scored today on a pick six, and they're looking to change that here as we start out the fourth. Chris Chugov has a wide open Jennings streaking down the sideline, and he got hit as he released it by Gary Johnson. And he's gonna wish he's got this out of his hands a little sooner. You're gonna see they fake a little slip screen. They run a hard post inside and nobody takes Jennings on the outside and he's a sick young man right there. And he could have held on the protection slightly longer. He may have been able to get that accurate throw out. Eight for 15, he only had 16 pass attempts all season prior to the Greer injury earlier today. McCoy for a couple. We're starting to hear some of that trash talk even upstairs that, uh, that Rocky was talking about. And now the injured player here is David Sills. They're all America candidate a wide out. Josh Sills. Oh, excuse me, yeah. Josh Sills. It's tricky. The O-lineman, <laughs> my bad, saw the three. I saw knee braces and thick thighs, Didn't and I'm thinking, like man, did he go inside and uh, get a lift in or something? He's played a little left guard and right guard today, flipping back, or uh, this year, flipping back and forth with Kyle Bosch. Redshirt freshman out of Byesville, Ohio, getting some attention from the athletic trainers. Back in a moment. Morgantown, now after that timeout, they've switched the alignment of the wide receiver, David Sills. He's now in the slot at the top of your screen. This is his area of the field where he has been money, 18 touchdowns. You got to figure they're going to find number 13 here. 
Still just the one catch. He's also got a drop. And it's incomplete looking for Jennings behind the line. Deshaun Elliott was right there waiting for him. And a flag late. Grant Langefelter is the guy who just replaced the injured Josh Sills. Early on the field was an incomplete forward pass, and there is no foul for unnecessary roughness as the players were just playing through the play. It's fourth down. I like that, playing through the play. Tom Herman would disagree. <laughs> where, where is that wording in the playbook? That's what he's asking. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, 56 has no idea that's a live ball or not. Yeah. He's being sure. And, yep. Referees throwing the flag. They talked about it. They got it right. It's uh, fourth and nine here, and they're going to go. Chuck it off to the end zone, broken up by Elliott. And Texas will take over on downs. They went for all the bet on fourth and nine. Didn't try to convert at the sticks. They just felt like they had a, a chance. And you know what? We talked about an impact player that was going to make a play at some point. Deshaun Elliott is one of those guys. Just gets his fingertips on that football quick enough to get over to guard Jennings. This kid might be an All-American bet. Six interceptions. He's a big hitter, a ball hawk, and he shows his versatility and movement skills at the safety position. Elliott's so impressive. He plays the center field, and he comes up in the run. He comes off the edge. He is a true do everything safety for the for the uh, for Texas. So on first down, Ellinger will give it to Daniel Young. How about a studio update with that now? How about it, Beth? You know what's happening in Madison, Michigan, Wisconsin. Third and 13, they converted Alex Hornibrook to A.J. Taylor earlier in the drive. This is third and 16. Huge touchdown, 14-10 right now, and Michigan quarterback Brandon Peters being carted off right now, Beth. Well, that's a tough one for Michigan because coming up next, they've got Ohio State as Wisconsin takes the lead there. Second and eight for Texas. Young weaving his way out across the 30. So a couple of teams that were in trouble at, at points today. When you talk about the ranked teams four through seven and who's going to grab that last spot, perhaps, there's the comparison with Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Auburn, and Georgia. OU, 61% chance they'll win the Big 12. Wisconsin may still have a date with Ohio State lurking, and for Auburn, of course, next week, it's the Iron Bowl with Bama. And I think, you know, Wisconsin and Auburn, in my opinion, Beth, they went out to yeah. find, uh, find themselves a seat same, in those last four games. Same, I think, for Georgia, because they still have possibly Alabama in the SEC championship game. Al Rashid Benton able to get to the quarterback there to force Ellinger's hand. Fourth down. They needed that stop. That was a big one for West Virginia after going forward on fourth down. Texas not able to eat too much of that clock up on that drive. Sims and Sills will be back deep. Out to the 31-yard line. And we'll take the timeout. 12.42 to go. ESPN College Football is presented by Vizio, maker of award-winning 4K displays. to seven Texas with the lead over West Virginia well, tonight after Utah Washington stick around for Sports Center over on ESPN find out who Mel Kuyper Jr. thinks is the better prospect Josh Rosen or Sam Darnold 
Also, the impact of today's games on the college football playoff race. Miami and Wisconsin are both in front now. Plus, a closer look at James Harden's historic NBA hot streak at Sports Center with Linda Cohn and Kevin Connors tonight at 1.30 Eastern on ESPN. Actually, flipping the page over to tomorrow morning. They actually reversed that call, by the way, on the punt and did say that Sims put up the signal for fair catch back at the 24. The pass incomplete intended for Karan White. It's a Texas defense that has gotten better and better. And there's a look at that fair catch again right there. Enough of a wave. You know, when we talked to Tom Herman this week, he said, He's d done a little studying, Anthony, and the, the championship teams have a top 25 defense. That's something they all have in common. Statistically, they're not quite there yet, but they are close as a flag flies. They've held Oklahoma to 29 points, Oklahoma State to 13 in overtime, yep. TCU to 24. Holding. Offense number 79, 10-yard penalty. Correction, Texas has elected to decline the penalty. It's third down. And of course, today, the only touchdown for West Virginia was scored by the defense. Uh, it's definitely the eye-opening part of this football team this year, for sure. And uh, a lot of players returned from last season, and some players have stepped up and had big, big roles, in particular, strong safety number four, Elliott, and, and many of these guys, and Malik Jefferson at the linebacker position has stepped up his game and become one of the top tacklers in the Big 12. On third and nine. Longhorns are coming. Hard hit on the quarterback and chugging off. Completes it to David Sills for a first down. Flags flying all over the place. Yeah. And this may be a hit to the head of the quarterback. We may, we may have a targeting situation here. We'll have to see it. Brecken Hager and Jason Hall, Anthony. Yep. Both of those guys basically hit the quarterback at the same time. Again, it's... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Hager's going to get foul, that one. Roughing the passer with targeting. Defense number 44. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play. Ruling of targeting is oh. under review. Hager's got to get his head up. I mean, he, he didn't have to go there. Watch, Hager is claiming he got face masked and pulled into the oh. quarterback, and Kajust does get the hand on the face mask. Yeah, it was earlier. He did get face masked, and that should have been called. But they missed it, and they caught the back end, and I'll tell you what, chugging off, showing some toughness here. I don't, wow. I mean, that is right under the chin strap, and you're hearing the reaction from the fans here. They just showed it on the big screen. Yeah, Hager definitely got his face mask pulled down, but was released, and then his helmet came back up. Then he brought his head back down and literally put his crown of his helmet right under the chin. Surely that, that'll be an easy one for these referees. In the replay booth to confirm. Keep in mind, too, now that we're into the second half, if it's confirmed, confirmed Hager would miss the first half of Texas After Tech next week. After reviewing the play, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. Number 44 is disqualified by rule. So Hager out for the rest of this game and the first half of the next. Okay. And of course, the additional uh, booze pouring down on Hager from the Mountaineer fans because of a, uh, well, a controversial tweet that he sent out to West Virginia's faithful during the week. So Hager is done with 12.02 left to go. That really changes field position, Beth. For the Mountaineers who were pinned back pretty well. Controversial comment, I should say. Play action from Chugganoff. 
Deep down the middle of the field, they're wrestling for it. White and Elliott, and they're gonna say it's a catch for Karan White. I was wondering, he was throwing into double coverage. If that ball was any higher, that would have been into the defensive hands. The question is, did he get his hands underneath? Still, of a catch is under review. Stands as a 30-yard completion. These receivers have caught a lot of balls, Beth, and it's great concentration. Let's see if that ball stays underneath his hands. That's tough to see there. That angle, I thought, looked like a catch had the hands under it. That one definitely we can X out. That's not going to help. Ooh. Now, maybe, maybe the left point of that ball hits the ground, maybe, right? There, I don't, that's... I haven't seen any indisputable evidence yet that would change it. Uh... Gary Brown is our replay official. Football right now is on the 17-yard line for West Virginia. I don't know, Beth. Right there, you see a bit of an awkward movement in the ball. It's tough. I mean, I, you know, these are... Again, you need evidence to overturn it here because I, the call on the field is a catch. Yeah, I think you may be able to see the ball hitting the turf. Again, it, when we super slow mo it, it, it kind of fuzzes it up. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field of a catch stands as called. It's first off. So clearly not visual evidence there, like you said, to, to m make that change. So advantage West Virginia. Nice catch by White. Five quarters, five and a, almost a half now without an offensive score. And David Sills, who's at the top of your screen, is a red zone target for this West Virginia offense. And that is in the second halves of games, five quarters. They'll run it on the ground with Crawford ball. Oh, Came out late, they're going to say he was down. That was Jason Hall who ripped it out of there. Jason Hall's been active today yep. for this Texas defense. Let's check it out here. Hall comes in. Yeah, it looks like his uh, waist is down right there before the ball comes out. But then David Sills, top of your screen, has made some magical catches in one-on-one -on -one coverage. On the ground to the 11-yard line, Charles Amenahu with the stop, Rocky. Yeah, West Virginia on that play, they motioned a player off to the offense's right. That left a lot of space and just single coverage on David Sills. You have to imagine that's something they'll go back to because Texas has been rolling the safety over top, essentially getting double coverage here the last couple drives. And now he's back in the in the slot position on the inside. Maybe a little crisscross action to try to get on the ball in the corner of the end zone. Pre-snap whistle. Movement up front. Right to the snap, false start, offense number 55. Five-yard penalty, it's third down. The left tackle, could just. Missed the season last year, Beth. One of their better offensive linemen. Athletic big for 6'5", 308, a redshirt junior. He's played well this year. Third and nine, they need the seven yard line. They're trying to run for it. McCoy puts his head down. And get a few back. They're obviously gonna go for this. Last time they had a fourth and nine bet, they kind of went to the end zone here. Shorter distance, fourth and five. 
The guy that catches those intermediate routes is number 12, Jennings, and the inside of the trips on the bottom to see if he can work the best defender for Texas, number four, Deshaun Elliott. Just a three-man pressure coming. Chuganov across the middle. Touchdown! Karana White! The senior on senior day from McCungie, Pennsylvania. His 11th score of the year. Well, he didn't throw it to Jen Jenkins, but he pulled out his guy to open up a window in the back. For White, excellent route. Two defenders chasing him with too much speed to that skinny post. Nice throw by Chuganoff. Finally getting on the board on the offense. His second TD pass of the season. Eight plays, 76 yards. And the score. 21-14, 9-0-1 to go. Getting it done, stepping in. Will Greer is out. Chugging off in, getting more confidence. Big touchdown throw for West Virginia. Oh, they're getting it rocking now in Morgantown. After the West Virginia touchdown, Texas leads by seven, 9 one to play. And a couple of teams that have started out today still with a chance. Albeit an outside one to get to the Big 12 championship game. Onside kick, and it's handled by Texas. Here's Adnan Verk in the studio. All right, Beth, thank you very much. Just another update this time on Michigan and Wisconsin. Kendrick Pryor here, the 32-yard touchdown. And with Peters out, O'Corn hasn't exactly even it up yet for Michigan. So 21 and 10, Wisconsin's in control. And coming up next, more Big Ten football is Ohio State. Still in the top 10, taking on Illinois. Great college football right here on ESPN, Beth. Well, Adnan will be watching that one, of course, because if Michigan loses, the Buckeyes can clinch the East with a win over Illinois on ABC. Interesting decision there, Beth, on sides. Yeah, Defense is playing better, offense has scored. I mean, listen, anything can happen, especially when you have a quarterback that's a true freshman. Or already made one big mistake in this game. Make them go 80 yards instead of 43. Short field for Texas with a mind on the fact that their kicking back game has not been good. Kyle Porter wrapped up by Adam Schuler. I tell you what, this crowd here, West Virginia, was maybe late to arrive, maybe joining some adult beverages there early on, but they're loud and they're in full effect here right now. I don't recall the fans uh, doing many of those things when I was here back. Of course not. <laughs> Porter on second and 11. Well, this West Virginia defense will have a chance to make a play here. Al Benton with the tackle. The senior from Newark, New Jersey, right in the middle of this 3-3-5 defense. Yeah, he'll stick his face in there. You better come up and block him. Two guys are in front of him. He's able to take up the space and make the tackle, and he's been an important part of this defense. Big play on third down for West Virginia's defense in Texas. They clock down to four. Bringing the heat on Ellinger. Able to roll away from it. Heaves it downfield and out of bounds. And it's fourth down. Nothing there. Great coverage. Flushed him out of the pocket. But they had an extra defender shadowing him and coming up. And West Virginia's going to get a chance, Beth, with 7.33 left. Well, the onside kick attempt doesn't hurt them on the scoreboard. May affect their field position uh, in a negative way here. We know, we know Dixon, he can kick him a long way, but can he position his kicks to find out? Pooch is this one short. And well played by Texas. They make the special teams play. Chris Boyd downs it inside the five. 
Adnan's got an update on the Horned Frogs, Adnan. That's right, Beth. Love a good uh, pooch punt. TCU and Texas Tech here. This is Robinson to jail and Rager. And Rager does the rest. So right now the Horned Frogs are up 17-3 early in the fourth. And coming up next right here on ESPN, Baker Mayfield, the Heisman frontrunner, getting set to load up against Kansas. That game is coming up, Beth. Well, Sooners are in the playoff. Chase Adnan positioned at number four this week. Mayfield a touchdown pass in 36 straight games. So here we go, seven and a half to play. Down a touchdown for West Virginia. They'll run it with Kennedy McCoy. And this Texas defense that we've talked about, the improvements all year long. Can they make the stop when they need it? It's going to be a... Long way to go for West Virginia, and, and the defense, like you said, for Texas has been tight and strong, and even on some of these completions, it's been very good coverage. Can they hold off a drive here, and, and can, can chug it off, get it done? Uh, you put it in the shoulders the last drive, Beth made a big throw, now pinned back, a little more pressure for the quarterback. A lot of time off the clock here between downs. Play action, popped up in the air, and it's still caught! Out at the 20-yard line by Gary Jennings. I'll tell you what. That heck of a concentration by Jennings. Gets tipped up in the air. Jennings just tracks it. Watch, even as he's falling down, still able to bring it in. The Mountaineers are lucky there. Ninth catch of the day for Jennings. McCoy nowhere to go. Jason Hall got there first, and Antoine Davis finished it. Watch the receiver's head, Jennings. It's just up. He's following it the whole time. There's no idea where he is. Able to keep it on his body. Chugging off saying, yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> That's an awfully good catch, by the way, to go over 1,000 yards for the season for Gary. Deep downfield, looking for Jennings, almost tipped it to himself. Davis had the coverage. Well, Jennings and White. Are the favorite targets right now for Chuganoff. Goes up, contested ball. Almost brings it down. Dante Davis falls back. Would have been a juggling catch here. They have an injury on the field. With a third down coming up for West Virginia. I think that is Devontae Davis who had the pass break up. Here he is, he's walking fine. Looks like it's just another day in the park here. Coming back to the huddle. And, uh, oh, the hammy. The hammy pulls up. I don't know about that one. Uh, I saw Dana Holgerson come and walk to the referee. That didn't look good, Beth. <laughs> Help to the Texas sideline there. Going to be a third and 10 coming up for Chuganov. Ohio State, Oklahoma, they're on deck. And then it's uh, out to Los Angeles later tonight on ABC for USC and UCLA. Well, the movable piece, Beth, on defense, is Sean Elliott, strong safety on the edge of the line right here. Can he disrupt this third and 10? Elliott's going to back off into coverage. Chuganov caught and sacked. Ball is down. Still out in the open. And the Longhorns jump on it. Chris Nelson with the recovery at the six-yard line. Yeah. Woo. Really on the field. The fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Texas. Well, we saw Roach in there. Defensive lineman corralling the quarterback here. Just blowing wow. back. Wellman, the fullback. And number 33, Johnson. Gary Johnson comes in and just cleans it up. Boom, right there. Ball bounces off the quarterback, bounces around. Two linemen there. Nobody can get it. And Nelson falls on it. And He's excited. excited. Yeah, and this is 
This is his territory, Beth. Once you start getting past the five-ish yard line, he'll start tucking that ball and running it. I guarantee you're not going to pass it on any of these downs. Quarterback run or hand it off to number 32 in the backfield, Daniel Young. Nice snap. Good redirect by Daniel Young. Continues to push forward. Down to the goal line. Good block by Jake McMillan to keep the pile moving. He got a hand in there to help out. Game of five. They've now run for over 220 yards today. Yeah, th those are some revealing numbers there with only 68 for the Mountaineers. And look for Texas to run this clock way down. Young again, jumps over the pile, touchdown Texas! <laughs> See if he's in here, he flips around, looks yep. like he's good. <laughs> it's like he jumped off the trampoline and did a flip back. <laughs> Quick score off of the turnover. 12 carries, 85 yards today for Young, and now a touchdown. 28-14, Texas, 5.07 to go. The pressure by Texas defense on third down creates disruption. They get the turnover, and then Daniel Young, the true freshman, doing his best somersault in the air for a touchdown. Well, West Virginia got back in it in the fourth quarter, but not at all happy about that last score from the Texas Longhorns, where they're dancing on the sideline. Three straight losing seasons. Oh, he looks healthy. There's Connor's <laughs> looking good. Yeah, that pretty good uh, knee bend there. The last two years without a bowl, and that could come to an end here. They win today, they are bowl eligible and would have a chance to secure a winning season next week against Texas Tech. We've got a studio update with Adnan. Still breaking it on the dance was number 55 there, Beth, but Mississippi State and Arkansas, this SEC matchup featuring uh, Nick Fitzgerald to Reginald Todd. Currently tied at 21, just over three to go left in this game. And coming up next, it's Oklahoma. The Sooners are one of the top teams in the country because of their offense. Can't wait to see what they do against Kansas. Coming up, Beth. Adnan likes Pooch punts, he likes Connor Williams dancing. Yep. Adnan, I need an update on Lafayette Lehigh, the longest continuously played rivalry in all of college football. Last check, Lafayette up on the uh, Mountain Hawks in the fourth quarter. Gary Jennings with another catch. Big news for Texas, so one of the many today, not just the dance moves, but the health of Connor Williams, who's back in the lineup, the All-American. It's the first play of the game, Beth, and he just mashes Reese no uh, Donahue on the outside, and he continues to fight and strain, and I'll tell you, he's done a good job. Looks like he's never missed a game, coming in after seven missed appearances. Floats one up there, and the catch is made by Marcus Sims. Under five minutes and rolling. 19 yards on that hookup. West Virginia is trying to rally here before heading to Oklahoma next week. Will they have to do that without their starting quarterback, Will Greer, out with an injury in the first half? Chugging on to give up the gut. And it's Martel Petway. Game six. Rocky? Hey, you guys are talking about Connor Williams. You know, sometimes it just takes one dominant physical player to invigorate an entire group. And this Texas offensive line, they've been beleaguered. They've been injured most of this year. But no question, he was a spark for their play here today. Flags down. Holding. 
offense, number 79. 10-yard penalty. It's second down. This was the key play in the game in that first half. Will Greer lunging for the goal line, fumbled it out of the end zone for a touchback and a nasty finger injury. When Rocky talked to Dana Holgerson at halftime, Dana told Rocky it was a broken finger on his throwing hand. Greer had come into the game fourth in the country in FBS and passing yards with 34 touchdowns. And he went out early in the West Virginia offense, never could really get things rolling against this Texas D. Dropped by Cutaway. It's been one of those days, Beth, for West Virginia. Penalties, drop balls. And obviously, like you talked about, Will Greer. It's really turned, put him one of the best performances by a quarterback in West Virginia history this year. Led the country in touchdown passes with 34. And uh, hopefully he's back sooner than later. 30-14. Blitz off the edge. Chugging off. Lost it. Had it stripped by Antoine Davis and West Virginia able to jump back on it. Co uh, Colton McKivitz all the way back at the 30 and a loss of 18. Watch Davis here. Instead of going and trying to run through the quarterback, he goes right for that football and tries to knock it out. It's a good job. The little details, and that goes back to defensive coordinator Todd Orlando getting this defense to play tenfold better than they have in years past. And these players are dialing in and having a great one against these Mountaineers. And that's Antoine Davis, the senior who last week had the pick six, a couple of interceptions and a fumble recovery. And now with the nice play there to strip it out. And on fourth down, West Virginia is going to punt here with two and a half to play. Beth Mullins, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman also with us today. The defense has shown up again for Texas, and Sam Ellinger has shown up at quarterback today. You're right, defense has played fantastic, and it hasn't been just the two guys in Malik Jefferson and Deshaun Elliott. It's been a collective piece with all 11 guys playing well. And, uh, you know, you look at this, uh, this offense for Texas. You know, what has it been? Quarterbacks, injuries in the offensive line. Rocky said it earlier, the spark was when left tackle Connor Williams came back and yeah. got the start today. And then when Sam El Ellinger got into the game, his running style, his toughness, and completing some balls early on when it was raining pretty hard here at Mountaineer Field uh, just really gave this team what they needed offensively from the get-go. And now Texas will probably just run this thing and run out of town and head back home to face Texas Tech next week but this is huge for the Longhorns and first year coach Tom Herman to become bowl eligible for the first time in three years and uh, have a chance next week to try and end the three-year drought of losing seasons the the worst stretch since back in the 1930s he was a grad here he was a grad assistant under Mac Brown this has been a place where he's always wanted to be and it's been a tough year that ups and downs and you know, Texas fans, they expect everything to happen right now. And there is a process, and he's fought through a lot of the adversities with injuries, quarterbacks, shuffling. And it uh, looks like towards the end of this season, this team is starting to turn the page a bit and play better football consistently week in and week out. Clock continues to roll. A minute and a half to play. Malik Jefferson, much maligned here. One of the biggest recruits ever to come out of Texas. First two years, really didn't look like he was much of a ball player at all, and he's really come on strong and improved his play. Leading tackler for this team, just shy of 100 tackles. 10 TFLs, had a nice year. There's no question this scheme has really helped him out. It's just enabled his natural athletic ability to take over. But I gotta be honest, Anthony, I think there's still more for Malik Jefferson to give. He's a tremendous athlete, uh, you know, 6'3", 240. He's going to have another year. And uh, you're right. I think another year in this system, Rocky, developing himself, watching the film, you self-scout self yourself as a player and try to get better. He could have Personal a monster foul. season if he, if he wants to. Defense number 99, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. 
Ball State is proud to be a part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. There's a uh, Sims had some nice catches today, and th this West Virginia team obviously had some some high hopes coming in this game. Will Greer driving them down the field. You think you're going to get a touchdown? All of a sudden, not only do you not get a touchdown, you lose your quarterback for the yeah. game, and really no opportunity for this team to turn this thing around offensively till late. And Texas came in and did the job on the road. And now they can uh, go into victory formation. And for the Texas Longhorns, bowl eligibility for the fans in Austin. Not so many smiles for Coach Tom Herman this year, but he can definitely appreciate it. For first time coming here, hostile environment. And uh, his players were ready. And number 55, and that quarterback right there, Sam Ellinger, really made a difference in... We'll say goodbye to, to Benton, Al Rashid Benton, one of the best linebackers to put a uniform on for the Mountaineers. Incredible career for that young man. Got a lot of guys coming back next year for Texas, and they are going to get a few more weeks of practice. Leading up to a bowl. For the first time since 2014, they go to six and five. West Virginia falls to seven and four. 28 to 14 will be the final score from Mountaineer Field at Milan Pushkar Stadium here in Morgantown. And let's uh, go down to Rockies with Coach Herman. Coach, in a lot of ways, it's been a tough year. You've had injuries, overtime losses. Talk about how good it feels to come into this place, a hostile environment, and get a win. It's uh, a testament to our kids and our culture and really never giving up. You know, this is a team that, that could have packed it in a while ago and, and they haven't they've kept coming to work every day uh, ready to get better and, and compete each and every Saturday and we showed that today coach I've not seen your offensive line have a better game than today you got Connor Williams back how proud of were you, were you the, of, 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 of those guys well yeah when you when you got a, a player like that it really makes things uh, go a lot smoother I thought our backs ran hard and I thought the, the offensive game plan was great because you're now bowl eligible is that something you guys talked about coming into today Absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's something that hasn't happened here in the last two years. And uh, we got one more left. We're going to finish, uh, try to finish with a winning record in the, the Big 12 and, and improve our lot in the, the bowl. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. 28 to 14, Texas a winner over West Virginia. Stick around for more out of the Big 12. The Oklahoma Sooners are coming up against Kansas. But for right now, back to the studio, Adnan, Joey, and Jesse.